at work on a Saturday like usual. But tonight after work, I'm going to put on the Boyd's At One stock for the Thompson Center Compass 6.5 Creedmoor that I've been showing that you can get a long range for under $1,000 consistently. Um, it's a pretty cool stock. It's got an adjustable comb. It's got an adjustable uh, butt on it. It's got some trinkets out front that we're going to swap out for a, a hard Picatinny rail so that we can mount uh, some bipods underneath of it. It's uh, pretty neat. Uh, something you're interested in. Stick around. All right, so like I said, I decided to go with the Boyd's At One stock for the Thompson Center Compass 6.5 um, long range on a budget, I guess you could say. That's it there. It's pretty slick. Um, I'm not a real big fan of the, uh, the veneer, pressed wood, polished, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's already got the blocks in it. It's already got everything you need. Um, it's got this out front, double swivel mounts, uh, one for like a, uh, a, a bipod and one for a strap. It's got back here, it's got, you can pull this out, change this. Um, also up front, you can pull this off and change this. If you don't like these kind of sharper angles here, you can pull this off, change this grip to where it's a, a more 90 degree grip, which I plan on doing. Um, QD mounts already in there both sides the coolest thing I like the most though is this it's got an adjustable butt and an adjustable comb so and all you have to do is push the button and all you have to do is push the button now there is one downside to this which is okay I guess it's not a hard deal to remember but if you it will let this slide all the way out and then this with that big old spring will come flying out at you so you just got to remember there is a certain amount of level that it only goes up and that's it other than that it's pretty cool $199 pretty uh pretty feasible comes ready to go pull your stock or pull your action out drop it in so what I don't like is I'm not a fan of the swivel mounts I don't use um, the the bipods with the big springs and stuff on them I hate them um, they they add way too much weight so what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap them out for the BT industry Picatinny rail, 3.35 inch. They also make one that's a four and a half inch for ones that have a little bit longer pattern. So we got that. And then I always go with the BT Industries uh, bolts or screws that go along with it, literally $6. So we got those. I got my little Lyman tool kit that I love so much because it goes everywhere, put it in my range bag, and if anything glitches out on the range, I can fix it. So, first thing we have to do is pull these off. Second thing we got to do is get these swivels off here. Which I just use a punch to loosen them up. So I lucked out on these because these screws that come with the BT Industries um, little jack bolt things, I'm not really sure what they call these things, but these here are actually made to go in a stock that doesn't quite fit them so what you would do is you'd have to drill holes and this would go down in it these crazy little spike suckers here they 
dig into your wood and that's how you get it. But I lucked out, this is actually the third stock that I've had that had the same thread pattern. So this one's not a big deal. But what you do have to do is you have to put this back on, take you a marker, and in the front hole, you have to drill you a hole that is the same diameter as your screw because it's too long and it goes in there just a little bit and it won't let this piece fit back on there. So I've already screwed that or drilled that hole in there so it's ready to go. Pretty simple. These are the same size. So I don't particularly worry much about going the wrong way. Get this one half ass on there. Get that one half ass on there. And tighten them up. Now these I don't put Loctite on because I kind of figure being a front grip like that, I'm gonna feel it when it comes loose. So like I said, these screws, I am just going to throw these away. For some reason, I keep actually keeping them. Rail, pretty simple. It is made of some pretty high quality steel. I mean, you can feel it when you when you hold on to it that it's not a it's not a cheap cheap deal. So I don't like the mounts up front because this actually is a cutie mount. Right here. Mm -mm -mm. Yay. I like it behind because I want the bipod. So if I do have a strap, it's behind it. It's not in front of it. I'm trying to get tangled up. So, I mean, you can pick either way you want this to go. I pick with the QD mount in the back. Screw up front. Screw out back. I always get this one just a hair bit snug. Just like that. So same deal, I don't put Loctite on these because this is something up front I think I'm going to feel wiggle. Um, if I was gonna go on a major hunting trip, I would probably make sure that I've pull that out and make sure that everything's good and tight. So, it's ready to go. So now we're back to the gun itself. TC Compass, 6.5 Creedmoor. First thing I'm gonna do is pull the bolt. This thing is one thing I hate about it. It has this weird, like, half latch. You gotta, like, pull it. empty don't worry fellas pull the mag don't need it and then so now we're gonna pull the barrel and action off do need is the front screw. That, that's what come with it. This is trigger guard, mag release, all the goodies. At this point would be when I'm going to swap out my trigger, but I got to thinking I don't really want to show you how to do the trigger. Um, it is a M Carbo adjustable trigger. You can go to, I believe it's mcarbo.com. Uh, they've got a great video on how to tell you how to get it apart, um, get it back together. It is phenomenal uh, how much difference it makes. It's adjustable, it's got different springs, whether you want it set up for hunting, whether you want it set up for um, bench rest, it's, it's pretty slick. So, 
This one here is for the back. Go ahead and drop it in there. This is for the magazine release. It's got a washer in case you have to shim it. This one here needs to be shimmed. So what we need to do is get the barrel and the action back into it somewhat. It's pretty simple. And you just line it up. So what we need to do next, now that we got this on, if it doesn't feel right, it's probably wrong. If it's teeter-tottering, it's wrong. You gotta kinda wiggle jiggle, kinda get it in there. So on the uh, um, trigger guard, there's a wider spot and a thinner spot. The wider spot goes in the back. It goes in there like that. They give you a new screw to go with it. Now these are gonna get a little bit of Loctite. Just a touch. Loctite blue 242. Just a tiny little drop. Drop it in there. And then I will tighten it up just a little bit so I know it's actually in there. And then up front, this is where it kind of sucks. So you get this mag release clip, which was originally that little ledge right there well the way Boyd takes care of it is this little piece of plastic and it fits right in here in this little group like I said a little bit of Loctite just a touch just a tip. I go ahead and put the washer on there because it needs a little bit of a shim. Ooh. In like that. Drop it in. So I'll tighten it up and get this stupid thing. In where it wants. Now I don't know if you'll be able to see this right here. There's a little ledge. And there's nothing poking out over here, and you can snag your nails on there. That'll definitely screw with you. I mean, at first you think that's not going to do anything, but what I do is I loosen it up just a hair so that I can adjust it one side or the other. And then go ahead and stick this in and make sure it's going to work. I think it kind of goes ahead and self-adjust. Wood screw that just goes right inside there. Hold the front of the trigger guard on. It's wood, so no Loctite. Now what I do is I loosen all these up. Just quarter of a turn or so. Now this is really important. There's always a little bit of wiggle room in these barrels. You can hear it. If you don't get it bedded, you need to make sure that what I do is I hold my hand up here on the barrel and down here like this so I can get a grip on it and I just And I just hold on to it and make sure that sucker is pushed back as far as it's going to. And then I go ahead and tighten the, this just, just where it's snug. I'm not going to tighten it. Tighten the front just where it's snug. Not going to tighten it. Now I know that barrel is not going to move as I go to torque it down. So now the barrel is in there. It's pushed back all the way. It's time to start torquing it down. If you are planning on doing this yourself, and you do not have some sort of inch pound torque wrench, you need to stop because these are specific. You don't want to just be the guy that just like, oh man, I just cranked her down. You need to get what you need to get. Now, Boyd recommends that these things are torqued down between 30 and 35 pounds. So I'm gonna shoot for 3250. Think about torquing, which is 
I don't think I've ever seen anybody explain with guns, but in my profession, we torque constantly. One of the worst things I see is on, on these guns is people torque, they go straight to 35 pounds and they crank. To get this thing as the screws pull and stretch, your threads actually actually stretch apart. So if you just go straight to 35 back here, this over here is actually going to be way higher because you're going to pull against that. It's going to teeter-totter a little bit. So what you need to do is this turns on up. The first thing I do is 10 pounds. Now chances are I've already torqued it down probably tighter than 10 pounds. But that's fine as long as I know I'm starting in a good spot. Okay, so 10 pounds up front, nothing. Nothing. Didn't twist at all. That's fine. That's what I want. So now I'm going to go to 20 pounds. And with these wrenches, it's where the red line is, not the top of the white. So chances are already tight enough. Oh, a little bit of movement. 20 inch pounds. Click, click. Now you go back over here. You got a little bit of twist. Twist it again. Now go back here. No twist. So it's good to go. It's good to go on up to the next level. So now we're going to go up to 30 pounds. Now instead of starting up here, we're going to start back here. You should start feeling a little bit of twist. Twist. Pop. Twist. Pop. Pop again to make sure. Now this one will probably twist a little bit more. Yep. A little bit more. What are you doing back here? Okay. Went straight to pop. So now I'm going to shoot for that 3250. Ooh. Looks good. Now, same deal. Turn a little bit. Nothing. Turned a little bit. Nothing. Keep going back and forth till they stop turning. Turn a little bit. Nothing. Nothing. So now I just make sure I break it a couple times. And that's it. Put the mag back in. Make sure it fits. This Boyd design here, not exactly the best, but what do you expect for 200 bucks? And that's it. That's your new Boyd stock on a Thompson Compass. Make sure everything works. That's it. She's ready to go. Next step, we're going to put it on some rings. We're going to swap out these mounts for 20 MOA, um, put a new scope on it. Um, that should pretty closely round us out. We'll take her to the range and see how she works. <laughs>